Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my channel, User One Productions. My name is David. Uh, I've been self-taught game development for almost 10 years now and we're going to be jumping into our very first part of our series which is going to be how to create a horror game in Unity. This is going to be from start to finish, from the very first time you guys ever open Unity to creating your very first model, to the very end building the game and hopefully publishing it on platforms like Steam. Please don't discourage the idea of creating a horror game. You're going to be learning many techniques and systems that can be implemented in different ways to suit your needs for your games. Unlike most tutorials on YouTube, we will not only be going into Unity and building our game, we'll also be using Blender for 3D modeling, we're going to be using a program called Audacity to edit sound effects for our video game, and we'll also be using Photoshop for texture editing and hopefully creating our own textures for our models. If this is something you guys want to stick around and see, remember to drop me a like and subscribe and we're going to hop right into Unity right now. If this is the very first time you're opening Unity, this is what it should look like. Right off the bat, I'm going to go to the top left and hit edit, go down to preferences, I'm going to go to the general tab, and I'm just going to change editor theme to dark, and then I'm going to change editor font to system font to kind of crispen them up a little bit. This is not required at all, this is just how I prefer to use Unity. We can exit out of that now. Something else I like to do is go to the top right, over here where it says default, this is how your Unity editor will be displayed. I'm going to go 2 by 3 and then I'm just going to move my windows around so I can work a little easier here. I'm also going to turn the slider over here all the way to the left so instead of seeing icons like this folder here it's going to actually just describe it in a word form. Now that I have the editor the way I want it to be we can jump right into game development. Over at the top I'm going to press game object, 3D object and I'm going to make a cube. Just going to zoom in on that real quick. Over on the right, I'm going to scale up 50 on the X and 50 on the Z. Already we have this little plane where a character can run around. What I'm going to be doing next is actually importing our standard assets. These are free assets that are provided by Unity themselves that can really help kickstart a project you're trying to work on. Personally, I'm using Unity 2019.4. You don't have to be using a specific version to follow along with this tutorial series. The reason I use it is because the Unity Asset Store is still part of the editor itself. Otherwise, you'd have to go on Google and then go Window, Package Manager, and then you'd have to find your assets in here. For me and everyone else that still has the Asset Store in Unity, we're going to go Window and Asset Store. I'm actually just going to grab this tab and pull it out to here, and then I'm going to full screen it. For those of you that don't know about the Asset Store, it's a store where people like you and I can put our assets on there for people to download, whether it's for free or you have to pay for it. I'm going to go to the search bar and type in standard. And we're going to be looking for this one right here. We're just going to download and import this into our project. Don't discourage the idea of using this pre-made package because you can always go in and edit the code the way you need it to be. This little window is going to pop up, it's just going to be confirming everything that's inside this asset. We're just going to press import, let Unity do its thing. The asset store is one of the biggest things that we have at our disposal right now for our game project. We are going to be doing some 3D modeling and sound creation, texture design, all that stuff throughout this series. And I will be providing all the stuff I create for a download for you guys. If you guys would rather use something else on the asset store, go right ahead, implement it into your game, into our series, however you want to go about it. But do not discourage using the asset store. Let's exit out of it real quick. These standard assets were created for Unity 2018, so some of the things in there are not going to work properly anymore. Right here at the bottom, you can see we already have an error. We're just going to press the error. It's going to take us to its path. I'm just going to click and delete it. Nothing else is popping up. That means there's only a problem with that one script, which is perfect. Let's go into our standard assets folder, characters, first person character, because that's what we're going to be doing for the series. I'm going to make it a first person game. We'll go to the prefabs, and then we're going to take FPS controller, click and drag it into our scene. Now, the reason I like this Unity setup is because up here is where I will be creating the game, and down here is what the character is going to be able to see. If you guys have not been able to realize already, our little character indicated by these green markings right here is actually clipping through the ground that we created. Let's just pull him up real quick so that way he doesn't fall through the map. I'm going to press maximize on play right here and then I'm going to press the play button. And now we can actually walk around the scene that we've created with our little character. Pretty cool. Let's press escape, get out of the game real quick. For testing reasons, I'm actually going to create some obstacles 
and texture this ground really quick. Also, this original camera that came with the scene, we can just delete. So let's go into our standard assets. We're going to go to prototyping, materials, and then we have all these different grids that we can use. Personally, I like to use the navy grid for the ground. Pressing our cube, we're going to rename it. We're just going to call it ground. You can also see the texture over here, which I'm going to bring the tiling up. We're going to do, let's do 15 by 15. Looks pretty good. Let's go game object and create another cube. Bring it up and just place it wherever you want to place it. I'm going to scale on the X 0.5, the Y 0.5, and the Z 1.5. And now I'm just going to create this almost like a staircase. So I'm going to press Control D to duplicate the object and just move it the way I need it to be. I'm going to create four stairs and I'm going to make a platform right here for the character to walk on. You don't always have to go over here and scale it this way. You can actually press this little tool up here and this is our scale tool. So now we can just pull where we need it to go. Cool. Let's go back to that prototyping folder and I'm just going to be adding some texture to it, giving it some life in the world. We're going to use the pink grid for it. Just click and drag it onto the objects. Change the scaling where necessary. I'm now going to create a game object, but it's going to be an empty game object right here. These can be used for many different things. It is just an invisible little object that you can use for organization, coding, and many other things. For my instance, I'm just going to bring it over to where we built this platform, grab all the cubes it's made out of, and drop it right into that game object. And I'll rename it Stairs and platform perfect and we can close that up we're going to want to make this as neat as possible because it's going to get messy going on down the line we're actually going to build off of this a little bit more and i'm going to create a little area so we can jump across because in our game we're going to be able to jump the reason we're going to create this little test arena is so we can actually get the character movement those are going to be my platforms to jump on and i'm actually going to create one more right on top of this and then we're going to make a little ladder object here. So I'm going to create a very basic cube in somewhat of a shape what a ladder would be. Something like that. I'm going to move it over here where the ladder would be placed. Let's give it a texture because why not? Now that this little area is created, I'm going to be focusing on slopes, which I'm just going to create a cube, put it down here. I'm going to give it a rotation on the X of the value of 50 because that's the max slope I want my character to be going up and down. Let's just scale it up like this, and then I'll create a little thing at the top for him to stand on. So like I said, this is going to be the max slope I want my character to be going up and down, because it doesn't make sense for him to only be able to go up slopes like this, and it doesn't make sense for him to go up slopes like that. This is also going to come in play later when we do a nav mesh agent, which is how we create an enemy and how they walk around the world, and more or less just how they behave within the environment. Just going to create another empty game object. I'm going to place it right next to this little slope platform, rename it, and then put these two objects inside of it. And now our editor is staying clean, which is amazing. Okay, let's all press play real quick and see what happens. Right off the bat, you might notice we cannot go up this slope no matter how much force we try to go up it. We can jump over it, sure, but that's not what we want to do. Also, our stairs do not function as stairs. We have to jump over them. Going up these platforms I created, you might notice the ladder also not working. So right off the bat, we have some stuff to work on. Let's press escape, get out of this. There's a couple different ways in doing stairs in video games, but the easiest way I have found to do it is just creating an invisible box over the stairs. Let me show you real quick. I'm going to go game object cube and bring it right where the stairs are. I'm going to keep this renderer on so we can see what we're working with here. I'm just going to start scaling and rotating it right over our stairs to the top step like this. You guys can probably already see what I'm doing here. We want to get this as next to near as perfect as possible. Just keep moving and pushing it out and everything until it sits perfectly. We don't want these little cubes to be poking through like this or else we're going to be hitting them. So right here is kind of how I want it to be. We're just going to clean off this edge a little bit so it's not poking all the way through the map. Now on this cube, we can go over here to mesh renderer. I'm going to uncheck it. So now it's invisible. And now if we press play and attempt to go up the stairs, they kind of work exactly how we want them to just like that. And that's how we're going to be handling stairs throughout the game. It also creates this slow effect because we're going up a slope. 
So here's my normal walking speed, and you'll notice that he kind of goes a little bit slower going up the stairs, which is perfect. As for this slope that we can't go up, I'm going to go over here and press on our character. Right here you're going to see this tab that says character controller. We're going to change this slope limit to whatever you want it the max to be. In my case, it's 50. So we're going to go 51, so that way 50 is in the, the range. While we're in here, we can see our script for our entire character. I'm going to be changing the walk speed, run speed, the jump length, and all that stuff right now. Because in a horror game, I'm not going to want to be zooming around and everything. If you're creating a first person shooter, like Splitgate, that is going to be fast paced, you're going to want to up these values. For right now, I'm going to change walk speed to 2, run speed to 6, jump speed to 5. And I'm also going to go to this little head bob tab. I don't want his head bobbing to be too crazy, so I'm going to actually press this little graph right here. I'm going to change these values up a little bit like this. Now, if we press play, you can see we walk pretty slow. I'm actually going to change that up a little bit. We run pretty decently. This is a pretty good speed for a horror game. Jumping is not too bad. We're going to have to change these values as we go along. All this right now is going to be guess and checking pretty much. But what we managed to fix was this slope problem. So if we attempt to go up the slope, you can see we actually can go up it now, which is perfect. I'm going to skip ahead to me changing all these values, and I'll show you what I've done afterwards. All right, you guys, I have my player movement exactly how I want it to be. What I've changed is are my walk speed to 3.5, run speed to 6.5, jump speed to 6.5, stick to ground 12, Gravity multiplier 1.75 and I've also changed how my head bobs a little bit more What I've done here is actually made it less sharp The way I went about doing this is I double clicked about the center of these peaks What that does is create a new key for us to play with and I just pull them out a little bit like that I do that for the top and the bottom. Let's see the character movement now The head bobbing is a little more subtle Walk speed is perfect. Running feels amazing. Let's see how jumping feels real quick. We jump and we come back down. Perfect. Gravity feels right. It doesn't feel like we're in the air too long and it feels like we're actually jumping. These platforms work as intended. The ladder still doesn't work because we haven't touched any code. We can hold off on the ladder for now, but so far we have a nice little test scene. Player movement exactly how we want it to be. The latter we're going to cover in a couple more videos out. Till the next video, you guys, I want you to play around with the editor a little more. Get your character movement exactly how you want it to be. And start planning out where you want to go with your project. Let me know your ideas in the comment section down below. And if there's a specific aspect to a horror game you want to see implemented into this game. And I'll cover it in a different video. Till the next one, guys. Please remember to drop me a like, subscribe, show the support for this series and this channel. This will be the end of the video for our very first part in the series. My name is David, and this is User1 Productions signing off for now. I'll catch you all in the next one.